Hello. Hello. Who is this? If you tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. <laughs> I don't think so. What's that noise? Popcorn. You making popcorn? Well, I'm getting ready to watch a video. Really? What? Well, just some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. You never told me your name. Why do you want to know my name? Because I want to know who I'm looking at. Scares you. Traps you. Fear. Don't trust anyone. Ever. Feels good to get things out in the open. And scream about them. <laughs> it is a film about a group of kids that uh, all love scary movies who are then put in a situation where they are being preyed on by an anonymous killer. They find themselves unwillingly uh, sometimes in those very cliche situations they sort of thought were so clever and, and fun to watch when they're watching scary movies. Hello? Hello, Sydney. You like scary movies? What's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a scary movie. Number one, you can never have sex. Sex equals death. Don't have sex, you die. That, that would pretty much be Wes Craven's message to youth of America. Abstinence. Key. Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. Oh! It goes from being sort of funny as you recognize classic film situations to terrifying when you see that it's really happening. And uh, kind of baffling and intriguing because all of these things become sort of woven up in a single net of who is the killer. And uh, which is it's kind of an impenetrable uh, mystery, as it turns out in this film. The police are always off track. If they watch prom night, they'd save time. There's a formula to it. A very simple formula. Everybody's a suspect. The first 30 pages of the script were probably like, the most exciting 30 pages that I'd ever read. I freaked out. And I put it down. And then I finished the next day during the light. So who are you? The question isn't, who am I? The question is, where am I? So where are you? Your front porch. Why would you be calling from my front porch? That's the original part. Oh yeah? Why well, call your bluff? Uncovering the dark side of yourself and confronting it and chasing it away. That's what the movie's been about to me. I was definitely dealing with a lot of depth in the character. When you try and find the, those levels, when you find a character, you don't want to just go with what's on the page. I do a lot of um, fighting with a couple of the characters in the film. Oh. Oh. Nice shot. Right, right, right. Like that? Man, that was a good punch. Lev, you nailed it. Looks like we've got a serial killer on our hands. Well, serial killer's not really accurate. Gotta knock off a couple more to get that title. Well, we can help, can't we? <laughs> I've always been a Wes Craven fan. I'm, t I'm scared of him. <laughs> Wes Craven was sitting in the, the lobby of Miramax and I knew I recognized as soon as I got the elevator, I was like, that's Wes Craven, that's Wes Craven. And I had someone come up and they said, Wes, Kevin, Kevin, Wes. And he went, Kevin Williamson? I said, yeah. He goes, he goes, I read your script. It was really scary. And I thought, I can lay down and die. Well, it was funny because, you know, I mean, my name's even mentioned. The killer's still out there. But don't go there, Sam. You're starting to sound like some Wes Carpenter flick or something. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Is that the one where the guy had knives for fingers? Yeah, Freddy Krueger. Freddy, that's right. I like that movie. It was scary. Wow, well, the first one was, but the rest suck. I kind of wanted to take that out, you know. I did not write that line. With the amalgamation of Kevin's script and Wes's direction, I knew you couldn't go wrong. Because Wes would bring Kevin's brilliance to life in the most 
graceful way. It's like, you know, you're a junkie. You want that, you know, you want that scary feeling. And a lot of people, you know, it's like a drug. You want more. You want to go into a dark theater, have the lights turn out, and just there's something about being scared out of your wits that has always appealed to me, and I think it appeals to everybody. <laughs> they go to scary movies because they already have certain fears. And the movie brings it out in a way that's fun because you know you're not going to be hurt. If something has been exercised, some, some terrible tension has been relieved momentarily. And, it, and so it performs some sort of uh, arcane service to the psyche. Ready, Ed? Action!